after laying out some bold claims about being able to break a world record in the world of water rockets, it's time for Astra to finally put those claims to the test. <laughs> Just this past weekend, we started our build, which we're going to share here today. The ups, the downs, and everything in between. If you remember our past video in which we went over the physics of why we think we might be able to break a water rocket world record, we mentioned a specific design which we think should be able to achieve that. The record that we're going for is the Class E record, which pretty much gives us free leeway to use any sort of plastic water bottles in order to make a water rocket. But still no reinforcement, so no fancy materials like carbon fiber, metal, anything like that. So the key features that we want our rocket to have are, number one, as high as a pressure as we can get. We think that around 8 to 10 bar is probably achievable. Number two, we want to have a pretty big volume, but one that exists in a very narrow diameter. So a really long and skinny rocket. And in the end, we kind of settled on something that is around a meter tall and about 9 or 10 centimeters in diameter. Of course, bottles don't come in this size, so we kind of have to figure out a way to splice those bottles together. And finally, we need to keep that entire weight below 300 grams, which is going to be a bit of a challenge. But hey, we're here for challenges. So, how do you make a record-breaking rocket? So the first thing we considered is the nozzle, because this is kind of the interface that hinges on whether this can work or not. We basically need to figure out a way to adapt the way you're delivering pressure to the rocket to the actual neck of the rocket where you're going to be shooting out the water exhaust. And to solve this problem, we figured we'd just use some garden equipment. For the nozzle and nozzle release option, we chose this simple quick disconnect that you can find on a lot of garden hoses. Basically the way this works is that the nozzle component is inserted into the release mechanism and you can basically slide that release me mechanism back and forth to either lock or unlock the nozzle in place. But how do we adapt this to the bottle? Well it turns out that if you get the perfect size, that would be the one that with the one centimeter diameter nozzle, you can actually fit the cap of a bottle right into the nozzle just perfectly. To complete this build, you basically just have to put a hole in the top of the bottle cap and then glue the bottle cap to the nozzle in order to form an interface from the bottle to the nozzle itself. To test this, we basically have just connected the quick disconnect adapter to a garden hose, and then we cut out a bicycle pump valve and fit it into the garden hose and clamped it. And then we could basically use a bicycle pump in order to fill the bottle with air and give it some pressure. So let's see if our nozzle build is strong enough to survive the pressure of a water rocket launch. <laughs> Four, do we have a leak? Nope. Nothing. <coughs> five bar? Yeah, let's just go to five. I don't want to go too much higher. Okay, five point two five. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't break. Is it gonna go to the door? Is that where it's gonna go? Uh yeah, I hope so. It was not good. <laughs> I'm sorry, light. You always get abused. <laughs> what? I, I see this as an absolute win. That actually worked pretty well. It was actually good to about 5.25 bar, which is better than I would expect on the first try. But maybe in the future, you should probably uh, do this kind of a test outside because you may be uh, running the risk of damaging some things in, inside your house. <laughs> So here we want to splice a bunch of bottles together in order to make a really long rocket that is long and skinny. This will give us really good aerodynamics while also giving us enough repellent in order to shoot us to a really really high height. Our splicing technique is not super sophisticated. We basically just chopped off the top and the bottom of the bottles and started to put the top of one onto the bottom of the next one. So it seems like you should be able to get a pretty good connection between two bottles just by using this method. And since epoxy works so well with the nozzle, we thought, hey, why not try it again with the splicing? <laughs> so our strategy was basically just to put some epoxy onto one side of the splice and then just take the other side of the bottle and kind of push it over top. And hopefully some of the resin will get inside and we kind of just spin it a little bit to try to get that epoxy distributed across the entire circumference of the splice. And hopefully that should keep everything together and give us a solid connection. 
We also put some tape around the splice in order to keep pressure on the bottle while it was curing, just to make sure that we were having a secure curing connection. In the end, we ended up splicing four bottles together, which gave us a total height of just under one meter. We also calculated and found that the volume of this would be just around four liters. But will it hold the pressure that we want it to hold? <laughs> That's the question. So we decided to use the same method that we were using to test the nozzle on the full spliced bottle and just thread it into the pump system and see if we can pressurize it without there being a leak. Slowly, 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 because we don't know what happens. There's a leak. Yeah. Okay. On this somewhere? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And that tape again? Yeah, we have to tape it. Not tape it, we have to add glue, I think. What do you think? If we tape it, it's not gonna it's not gonna hold. Yes, pressure. Yes. Unfortunately, we immediately noticed that the splices were not exactly perfect connections. Uh, there was definitely some air coming out of the sides. So <laughs> we tried to mitigate this by just putting more tape around it, but really the tape doesn't really do anything. So <laughs> we really need to rethink this whole splice solution that we've come up with so that we can make sure that we're not getting any uh, gas escaping. In the meantime, we thought, why not just carry on with doing the class D build? and uh, that way we just have to focus on one single bottle and we don't have to worry about the splices. And then if we find a solution for figuring out the splice issue, we will uh, fix that later on. But for now, it's on to the next parts. So in order to actually launch the rocket, we need to build some sort of mechanism that will allow us to do that. A uh, launch stand, if you will. Here's Jonathan to explain how that works. Okay, so this is about how uh, the launch stand is gonna look. These are gonna be a little bit longer. And we have this set up to pressurize the rocket and in the bottle there will be this adapter that we made for uh, just the standard hose connector. And yes, this will be connected below here and then you can pressurize the rocket. And I can just show you how we're going to launch. This is going to sit about like this. And to release it we need this orange part to move down like this to disconnect the connector and allow it to fly away. And for that we need a downwards motion, for that we're going to attach a string of some sort to this, route it below this bar, and then off into the distance. Then when we pull on the bar, uh, on, the, on the string, that goes around the bar, pulls down this, launches the rocket where we can be at a safe distance. In order to make sure that our rocket is flying in a straight line, we also need to add some aerodynamic features. The main one being the fins. We want our rocket to be as light as possible while also being aerodynamically stable. So the best way to do this is to add three fins to your rocket. Fins on a rocket kind of work like feathers on an arrow, and they basically just keep the rocket flying true by causing there to be more drag on the back if it starts to go out of alignment. But we don't want our fins to have too much mass, otherwise that could be a problem. But luckily I was able to dig up some plastic garbage that I had that actually turned out to be perfect for the job. Basically we just used the back of a headphones case which had some relatively thick plastic but not so thick that it would cause too much weight to be added to the vehicle. We then made a fin stencil out of paper which we were then able to tape onto our plastic in order to cut out perfect fins for our rocket. In the end, these fins weighed a total of 12 grams, so it was actually a pretty awesome solution in terms of mass. Remember, we're trying to keep the big rocket under 300 grams, and our Class D rocket, we're trying to keep under 150 grams, so really good to save on mass. In order to attach the fins to the rocket body, we came up with a solution where we would actually bend back the back of the fins, where it connects to the rocket, uh, one, one way and the other one the other way, and then actually glue those pedals onto the rocket body itself. This actually gives a lot of good surface area contact for the fins and hopefully we'll keep them on the rocket while it's flying at the crazy g-forces at the start of the launch. So the last part of the rocket is of course the recovery because we want to get this rocket back. We don't want it just to fall to the ground and be destroyed. But again, we have to think about mass because we want to try to conserve mass as much as possible. So we decided to keep the same theme of trying to use garbage items in order to build our rocket and we actually found a great garbage bag which would function great as a parachute. To construct this parachute we basically just took the garbage bag and cut out a circle which was about 60 centimeters wide and then we placed eight holes along the circumference of that circle and one big hole in the middle. 
The holes on the circumference were to, of course, connect our lines to. We had eight lines coming off the parachute, and those all connected to the main body of the rocket. And here we've just actually taped them onto the body of the rocket, and it turns out that that's actually enough to hold them in place. The hole in the center is actually maybe the most interesting. The reason why we have to do that is because we need there to be airflow through the parachute, otherwise the parachute might actually stall and kind of collapse and not open at all. So after our quick design of this parachute, we thought, why not test it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll go. Awesome. It works surprisingly well. Yeah. Yeah, it opened up fully like within like a second or yeah, two. Yeah, but it almost works surprisingly well. So it will actually really be enough to just remove the cover. And I think so. Just have the cover be removed and that's it. So yeah, if we do it with the elastic thing where we have the elastic wrapped around the... So if we have the elastic wrapped around the cover, so the cover is being held on with elastic pressure. And then that's connected to our servo. If the servo releases the elastic, the pressure will be gone, the cover comes off, and the parachute should just come right out, open. According to our test, it should work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's continue. Of course, the parachute by itself is not enough to have this water rocket working. We actually have to have a way to deploy that parachute. So our strategy here is basically to fold the parachute into the hand-holding thing that's in the top of the, of the water bottle. It's actually really convenient that it's there because it basically is the exact same volume of the parachute and the lines when we squish them all together. So actually pretty convenient for us. Basically, we're gonna force all of those pieces into that space using a cover, which we're gonna place over top of that. And we'll also keep the whole thing relatively aerodynamic. And we're going to wrap an elastic band around that cover to hold it in place, and then connect that elastic band to a servo, which will rest inside of our avionics bay. And then basically the servo that holds that elastic will be triggered, turning it and releasing the elastic band, which will then release the cover and the parachute can come open and everything should be working fine. We're gonna hold it a little more. Not the other way, the other way. <laughs> what the Why are you doing, are you doing the wrong way? <laughs> Just look, look at this. Yeah, hold it like that and then let's see if it'll come off. What is it? <laughs> I really flipped the motor, right? Like hold it a little more. So like it's, ref it's refusing to work. Perfect! Hey! That's a release. Alright. That. Plus this. This is our bottle rocket. What should we call it? Button. Astra Bottle Mark 1. The only things left to do are, of course, to add the uh, avionics mechanisms in the top of the bottle. And we're gonna cut off this top here and put a little aerodynamic nose piece just so that we can, uh, you know, get an extra couple of meters. And in the end, it only weighs about 150 grams once we put the electronics in. So uh, it should be relatively light and hopefully challenge the record that currently stands, but we'll see. Yeah. We've already pressure tested the bottle up to. 5.25 bar. We're gonna push it up to 6.9 for the launch, so we're right up to the limit of what we're allowed to do. Uh, we... ah! <laughs> We've also tested out the parachutes, and uh, basically it opens up very nicely from the configuration that we've folded it into this section, so that should work well. Um, once we get the electronics hooked up and connected to the string, we'll also test the release mechanism to make sure that's also working. Uh, but we need to, before we do that, we want to kind of solder stuff in and 
we need to also add some the, the altimeter that we need to use and that's not here yet today so that will still be coming but ultimately I think that this design works we definitely know that it also works the bottles good uh, the fins hopefully are straight enough that it doesn't fly crooked so uh, we're nearly there if you have any cool names for the water rocket be sure to let us know in the comments and remember to expand your horizons. <laughs>